Well, welcome back to our next lesson. I guess this is lesson five. Now, in this discussion, we're going to move from the network edge, where we've been in the end systems and so on, and dealing with the media that's used there, to the network core. So let's pick up there. In a network application, hosts exchange messages with each other. Messages can contain any number of different kinds of information. Messages may perform a control function to set up the communication, or they can contain data, such as an email message or a picture. As we learned earlier, the source will take the message, let's say a full-length movie, break it into small packets, and sends the individual packets toward the destination. Each of the packets travels the communication link from switch to switch to switch until it reaches the destination. There are two kinds of switches, link layer switches and routers. We'll be talking about a model of network communication sometime soon, and we'll learn what the term link layer represents. Link layer switches are found at each end of a single link serving as switching stations to other links on an autonomous network. An autonomous network is a network that is under a single management, such as your university network. These link layer switches know how to direct traffic around that autonomous network, but they don't have the ability to direct traffic to other hosts on the internet. A router, on the other hand, is at the edge of the autonomous network and has the technology to route the packet to other autonomous networks on the internet until the packet reaches the destination host, wherever in the world that is. The packets will move across the link at full transmission speed based upon the characteristics of the medium used on the link. Obviously, a link used in twisted pair wiring will have a different transmission speed than a link used in optic fiber. We just got through in the previous lesson talking about some of the differences between those uh, transmission speeds. Most packets use what is referred to as store and forward transmission at the inputs to the links. Store and forward transmission means that the packet switch must receive the entire packet before it can begin to transmit the first bit of the packet onto the outbound link. In other words, if a packet is made up of 1500 bits, the receiving router cannot transmit anything to the next hop until it's received all 1500 bits of the packet. This means that the router must buffer the bits until it is able to transmit. This slide explains the time it takes to transmit and receive a packet. However, as you can see, the example is using a zero propagation delay. However, there is no zero propagation delay other than possibly for a signal passing through the vacuum of space. In other words, this image is not showing us the attenuation effects of a medium. When we are talking about transmission across copper, fiber, or even air, there will be a propagation delay. Each of these media have different levels of propagation. Yes, even the atmosphere has some propagation. Each packet switch has multiple links attached to it. A typical small link layer switch will have 8, 16, 32, 48, or more ports for attaching additional links. For each attached link, the packet has an output buffer or an output queue, which stores packets that the router is about to send into that link. The output buffers play a key role in packet switching. If an arriving packet needs to be transmitted onto the link, but finds that the link is busy with transmission perhaps from another packet, 
the arriving packet must wait in the output buffer. So in addition to the store and forward delays, packets suffer output buffer queuing delays. These delays are variable and depend on the level of congestion on the network. Since the amount of buffer space is finite, an arriving packet may find that the buffer is completely full of other packets waiting for transmission. In this case, packet loss will occur. Either the arriving packet or one of the already queued packets will be dropped. Earlier we said that a router takes a packet arriving on one of its attached communication links or one of its ports and forwards that package onto another one of its attached communication links. But how does the router determine which port to use to forward the packet? Packet forwarding is actually done in different ways in different types of computer networks. In the internet, every host or end system must have a unique address. It's called the IP address. When a source wants to send a packet to a destination host, the packet being sent includes the destination IP address in the header along with other data. As with your mailing address, this IP address has a hierarchical structure about it. When a packet arrives at a router in the network, the router examines at least part of the packet's destination address and forwards that packet to an adjacent router that has indicated in prior communication that it can send the packet on to the destination. Did you catch that? The second router ha is informing the first router that it knows the way to the final destination and therefore the first router is sending that packet on to them. That prior communication between those two routers allowed them to create a forwarding table that maps destination addresses to each other's outbound links or ports. In other words, the forwarding table includes the address, or at least part of the address, and the port on this router can reach that address. By the way, a port is simply a term for a connecting point on the device to a link to another device. That port is both outbound and inbound. When a packet arrives at a router, the router examines the address and searches its forwarding table to find the appropriate outbound link or port. The router then transmits the packet out that port. We just learned that a router uses a packet's destination address to index a forwarding table and determine the appropriate outbound link. How are forwarding tables set? Are they configured by hand at each and every router or does the internet use a more automated procedure? We'll address this issue later, but for now Note that the internet has a number of special routing protocols that are used to automatically set those forwarding tables. A routing protocol may, for example, determine the shortest path from each router to the each destination and use that shortest path results to configure the forwarding tables to the routers. Visit the site www.traceroute.org Choose a source in some country and trace the route from that source to your computer. What we have been discussing is a communication technology called packet switching. What we may have noticed is that the switch responsible for sending a message from one device to another actually processes each packet of that message individually. In other words, it does not bundle all the package that make up a message and send them to the next hop all at once. It takes each packet, determines the best route to the next hop using the forwarding table, and then sends that packet on. Once that packet's on its way, 
the router goes through the process again for the next packet in the queue. If the state of the route has changed, the router will find a new route and the second packet will be sent at a new and appropriate link. In other words, if somewhere along that path a router quits working or loses communication or says the situation's changed, the second packet may go an entirely different route from the source of the destination. Sort of like those trucks in that warehouse. This process will continue until the entire message has been acknowledged by the destination host. So as a result, the packets that make up a single message may travel from source to destination by different routes. Think for a moment about the other protocols that will be needed. Obviously, there's going to have to be some rules for putting all those packets back together in the right order for an accurate message. Okay, let's take a break here. Take care of any assignments that you may have regarding this lesson. And when you're ready, come on back and we'll proceed to the next step.